This is the world's first self-driving electric race car called Robocar. And when they're out on the track, they won't have any drivers, there's no cockpit. All of the cars will be exactly the same, same specs. The only difference will be the team behind them and the different algorithms they're creating. What makes this self-driving race car different from the typical race car that has a driver's seat? I would say everything. <laughs> it looks like a plane. Uh, with wheels and it's super efficient in terms of aerodynamics and it's super fast. Professional drivers cannot take the g-force which are going to be created in these type of cars and it's super powerful so we created a special motors for these cars so it's almost 500 horsepower per wheel so it's a super powerful car it's a beast and uh, Software engineers need to find a way how to manage this power. When people go to a racetrack, they're rooting for a driver. That's the person they can relate to. It's hard to relate to a car. So why do you think that people are going to pay to go to events to see cars race each other without any driver, a human being to root for? I really believe that there are a lot of human intelligence here because to make this car drive in a very intelligent way, you need to have super smart people who are doing the things. So there is a drama, there is people who are doing this. Normally software engineers or any engineers are in the backstage of any race events. Here they're becoming the main heroes. It's the humans who are fighting one team against the other one. Do you envision a world where people start rooting for the coders? I really believe that those software engineers will become superheroes, yeah. Do you think that the common man in the street who makes minimum wage is going to be able to relate to this? Or is this kind of a sport for rich guys? The future, in any case, is going to be driverless, so we'll see those cars and, uh, like on the roads very, very soon, much sooner than we can expect. And of course it will touch us everyday life, and we'll see it like, and we'll accept it very, very, very quick. When I talk to the people creating self-driving cars, they always say it's not to be cool, the real purpose is to try and eliminate car accidents, but one of your prototypes had a car accident recently in Argentina, so doesn't this defeat the purpose? Uh, I think it's opposite, because it's a platform where all the teams are learning. So it's a safe environment where you can do anything you want. And it gives you the, a lot of knowledge because when you crash, what you get, you get a lot of data. You can understand why did it happen, how to avoid it in the future. And there is no risk for life. So this knowledge you can reuse on the real road cars. So it means that our real road cars will become safer because we get the knowledge from extreme conditions. How much will one of these cost me? We don't sell those cars. It's part of our platform. So when the teams are coming, they're using those cars. So how much did it cost you? To make? Yeah. Uh, around one, one million pound so to make this a car. A little more than a million dollars. Yeah. Worth it? Yes, for sure.